Hello, everyone, and welcome. We'll just give everybody a few more minutes to get logged here, and then we'll get um, started. Welcome again, everyone. Um, we'll just wait a couple more minutes here before we get started, and we'll let a four, few more people join us. Okay, well, we'll get uh, started here. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'm Cindy Erickson, tour coordinator with Westworld Tours and joining me this evening to talk about our exciting journey to Africa is our senior tour coordinator, Coral Romanchuk. Welcome Coral and thanks again for being here. We're all excited to hear what you've got to share with us tonight. Thank you so much, Cindy. I'm super excited to be here with you tonight. Well, we're super excited to have you. <laughs> so um, we do have everybody on mute. So if you would like to ask questions, we encourage you please to type your questions into the Q&A box. It's located on your screen there. Uh, we will be happy to answer all of your questions at the end of our presentation. And if you've joined us on Facebook, you can type your questions into the comments and we will uh, get to your questions as well. And again, we welcome your questions. If you think of something, type it into that Q&A box and we will get to it at the end of our presentation. And our future presentations coming up will be coming soon. We are going to take a little break here over Easter and we'll be coming back live to you in May. So, you know, here's a little sneak peek of what we will be doing presentations on coming forward. We've got our exciting 25th anniversary tour to our international <laughs> destination, which we are uh, preparing for you and we'll have ready to announce in May. And we're really excited about that. So you'll, you'll wanna stay tuned for that. We're also going to have a presentation on our Celtic adventure to Ireland and Scotland. So you, that will be coming, as well as a presentation on our Maritimes All Coach Tour and many more. So we don't want you to miss those invites. And uh, if you would like to subscribe to our e-newsletter, you will get an email about them and we'll be able to register quite easily that way. We encourage you to, to sign up for that e-newsletter. We will not inundate you with any emails, or a few emails, I should say, and you can unsubscribe at any time. To do so, you can visit our website at westworldtours.com slash subscribe, and or you can send us an email to inquiries at westworldtours.com. So a little bit about Westworld Tours, for those of you that have not traveled with us before, and uh, just give you a quick little update. As Western Canada's premier tour company, Westworld Tours has been serving Canadians from coast to coast throughout North America and around the world since 2000, presenting quality components, including modern comfortable coaches, professional tour directors like Coral, um, experienced courteous drivers, baggage handling and excellent accommodations. We take in all those important sites and attractions and include several meals throughout our tours. Thousands of passengers have chosen our first class style of touring, enjoying the great value, security and stress-free environment, all while making new friendships along the way. We know our tour directors enjoy getting to know you while we're on tour and they love to see familiar faces again. Um, so we do look forward to welcoming you on board if you've never traveled with us before. And for those that have traveled with us, I know we look forward to seeing you once again. So here we go. Africa, our tour is going to depart May 7th to the 23rd, 2025. And you can check off a few countries off your bucket, bucket list with this adventure through South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Botswana. Our African tour features urban exploration in the picturesque cities of Johannesburg, Livingston, and Cape Town. 
the South Africa, pardon me, my mouth is full of marbles tonight. <laughs> the South African culture is one of the most ethically diverse in the world, adding to the ambiance and wonder of this action-packed tour. Heading into the countryside, ecological adventures, including safaris, game drives, bushwalks, and river cruise safaris will balance the urban and rural experience. You'll visit Kruger and Kobe National Parks and attend a sunset cruise on the Zambezi River. See one of the seven wonders of the world at Victoria Falls. It's really a tour you're not going to want to miss. So at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Coral and I'm happy to introduce her. As I said earlier, Coral has been with Westworld Tours for 23 years now, I believe it is. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, Coral. Um, she's traveled the globe extensively, setting foot on all seven continents, bringing to her role as Senior Tour Director a wealth of knowledge and experience. So welcome again, Coral and uh, we're all excited to hear what you've got to share with us about Africa. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Um, I appreciate that lovely intro. And uh, I, it's really great to have you with us this evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in uh, to our presentation this evening. And I just have to tell you, I have been looking forward probably for months, actually, <laughs> to uh, to do this, uh, this Zoom presentation on Africa. Uh, we've talked about this for a while uh, when we were going to do this show. And, uh, and finally, it's here tonight. Uh, this is just such a special tour. And and uh, I'm really thrilled to have the opportunity uh, to be sharing with you this evening a little bit about uh, Westworld's uh, tour to Africa. And we absolutely cannot wait to go back again uh, next spring in uh, in 2025. This is just such a such a special tour. And uh, those of you who are listening tonight that you're thinking, oh, I've always wanted to go. Should I just should I just do it? The answer is 100 percent. Yes, you should. Um, um, I, I think I can promise you it will live up to your expectations. It really will. And, um, you know, when I was preparing for our show tonight, I was thinking, you know, I do like to share some fun facts about the places uh, that we go in the tour when I'm doing these Zoom presentations. But I thought tonight I'll do a bit of that. But I also really want to do something else tonight. More importantly than fun facts, I just want to give you a feeling for the tour, uh, why it's such a special tour. And, uh, you know, all the memories uh, to to me, Africa was really uh, almost more about the sensory experience than it is about just the actual facts of the tour. Uh, so four countries uh, that we're going to travel in. Um, I had had the pleasure of being on the continent of Africa twice before, but last year was my very first time that I had done an actual safari tour. So it was actually new for me on our maiden voyage in 2023. Um, and I had a lot of very excited travelers on the tour as well. So we just had a lovely group and, and just so looking forward to doing it again in 2025. Um, the shot that Cindy has up for uh, for you here, everybody, is uh, a really good map of the general itinerary of the tour. So you see Johannesburg kind of in the middle of the map. And uh, Johannesburg is uh, where we're going to be starting uh, at. That's the largest city in South Africa. And uh, South Africa is the country where we will both begin and end our tour. So yeah, largest city by population. Uh, we actually do have some motor coach portions to the tour as well. So if you see that red line that goes from Johannesburg over to Hazy View and Kruger National Park, uh, we'll get to that a little bit later, but that's going to be a really spectacular, beautiful part of the trip. I love it, that drive over to Kruger and Hazy View. Uh, but our trip does include the internal flights as well uh, on the continent of Africa. And and uh, we will be flying uh, from Hazy View up to Livingston. Uh, so we'll be overnighting in Livingston. Um, as I say, we're going to have four countries that we're going to visit. We'll be in South Africa and we'll be in both uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia. And then, of course, Botswana as well. And then making our way back to South Africa at the end of the trip. So you see Zambia at the top. And uh, and then we'll be spending some time up there. Uh, Chobe National Park the Zambezi River, and then making our way back down to Cape Town for the final few days of the trip. It is a spectacular itinerary, and uh, I just can't emphasize that enough. It's really true. Thanks, Cindy. 
All right. So here we are uh, starting in uh, in Johannesburg, everyone. And um, I actually had it on my list of things I wanted to talk to you about this evening. Um, and maybe without further ado, it would actually be good to mention a word about safety. Um, having never spent time in South Africa before, I'd had conversations with people uh, before we embarked on our maiden voyage uh, of this trip last year. And so I can share with you a little bit, those of you who are thinking about joining us uh, on uh, on this tour you know um just what uh, what you should keep in mind uh for safety um it is really paramount in south africa especially um i had uh, i had folks in uh, in africa say to me once you get out of the cities and once you get out of south africa it's really not quite as big of a worry um you know that might be slightly open to interpretation but uh, but the cities are really the biggest concern so one thing i would tell you is that you just don't walk around by yourself. You don't ever walk around uh, by yourself in the cities, um, especially in Johannesburg, maybe in Cape Town as well too, because uh, uh, they do have a, a bit of a reputation uh, for danger. Um, but as long as you're keeping your wits about you and uh, you know you're staying uh, close to home, you know, and especially uh, after dark, uh, you know, we like to stay close to the hotel and uh, never be wandering around um, after dark, and certainly. Um, always be with friends or be with uh, other fellow travelers uh, is really a good good idea. The interesting thing about it is some of the loveliest people I think I've ever met in all my travels I met in Africa. Uh, so it is maybe a strange you know, juxtaposition when you consider that safety is really paramount because you will be warned about that. Um, and then you consider the fact that you're also meeting some of the loveliest people you could ever hope to meet. So just uh, so many warm and inviting people. And uh, just, uh, yeah, it was really a fantastic experience. It all starts in Johannesburg, however, and uh, as I was saying, it is the uh, the largest city in the country. And uh, what you're looking at here in the left hand side of your screen, everyone, is um, a few of our passengers on last year's tour standing in front of uh, the statue of uh, of Nelson Mandela. So this is Nelson Mandela Square. I put a few Nelson Mandela quotes on my presentation uh, this uh, this evening, and the one I want to start with uh, is the quote: "Never give up on the belief." In goodness. Uh, Nelson Mandela really was such an inspiring figure. And there's quotes of his all over the uh, the sidewalks and the pavement in Nelson Mandela Square. But uh, um, yeah, this is an area where there's a lot of uh, shopping and uh, and restaurants. By the way, there's going to be lots of great shopping on this tour, lots of uh, lots of fun things to, uh, to take home for sure. But uh, Nelson Mandela, we'll talk about him a little bit throughout the presentation uh, tonight, but he spent 27 years uh, in prison and uh, only just released in uh, in 1990 uh served as president of South Africa from 1994 to uh, to 1999 and the square that bears his name uh pays uh, homage to uh to him as a symbol of freedom and uh, an African pride as well so uh, so that's Nelson Mandela Square and then looking over on the right hand side of the screen uh you're seeing uh, actually a, a restaurant that uh, that we stop at called Shea Alina's this is in um, a part of uh, Johannesburg, uh, quite well known. It's called Soweto. Uh, the word Soweto is actually, um, it's actually an acronym referring to the southwestern townships. And uh, traditionally, it grew out of the shanty towns and uh, the Black eth ethnic groups um, for the development of, uh, of Black equality. So hence, uh, Soweto. That's actually a private home, though. Uh, Shea Alina's, where we take you for lunch, is actually uh, a Lena's private home. So we have uh, lunch there and dancing and music and uh, it's a lot of fun. So you're really getting uh, getting a personal experience. And I definitely find myself that's one of the highlights of the trip is the personal experience you're having uh, with the people that you're going to encounter on the tour. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, and uh, moving on, everybody, uh, the next thing uh, that we're looking at here is um, the Constitutional Court. So, um, again, um, South Africa and uh, in Johannesburg specifically uh, now, uh, Constitutional Court, uh, this is a seat of a constitutional, uh, constitutional court, excuse me, of South Africa, I meant to say um, constructed uh, using bricks from the demolished um, awaiting trial wing of the former prison. 
Nation. And uh, it was inaugurated at Constitution Hill as an act of reclaiming a place previously affili affiliated with the violation of human rights at the old Fort Prison Complex. Uh, so we'll tour this. Uh, that's actually our local guide uh, standing in front of us in the top left-hand corner. We're all looking down at him speaking to us. And then on the bottom right-hand corner, you're looking at the flame of democracy. And uh, that's actually built into one of the stairwells of the old prison. So the Constitutional Court is and the old Fort Prison uh, complex. And uh, the flame of democracy lit back on December 10th, uh, 2011, which was the 15th anniversary of the signing of the Constitution in, uh, in South Africa. So uh, this is just all part of the touring that we're going to do. So we're going to have a, a few nights stay in um, Johannesburg and then this is something um, I can't say enough about this. What you're looking at, everyone, now is um, the Apartheid Museum. And the Apartheid Museum in Johannesburg is uh, really a powerful insight into uh, South Africa's history of racial segregation. Now, talking about fun facts, well, I shouldn't say fun facts. That's not really true. But uh, but just facts about, uh, you know, about this. Um, I could share facts with you at this point, but Really, um, this is truly already even before you know we get into uh, farther into the tour. This really is a sensory experience. Uh, just the time that we're spending in um, in Johannesburg, uh, learning about what apartheid was. Um, I have to say, I learned a lot about it uh, in uh, Johannesburg. And to be honest, it's just it's a lot to take in, and um, it does it does weigh very heavily uh, on you. I, I find mind when um you know you're you're visiting these places in Johannesburg but uh but it's it's pretty fascinating it really is and um so the apartheid museum opened back in 2001 and it really does just invoke this very profound feeling inside of you uh learning about what happened uh with apartheid and uh it is also designed with uh, film footage and photographs text panels and artifacts as well that illustrate the events and the human stories that are part of that horrific history of apartheid. So, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't deny it's a heavy part of the tour for sure, but, uh, but it's really, really fascinating. It is. So this is all part of our, uh, our touring during our time in, uh, in Johannesburg, by the way, um, Johannesburg has a city of uh, approximately 6.3 million people being, uh, being the largest city by population in, uh, in the country. Thanks, Cindy. <clears throat> And we're not quite finished yet. Uh, before we leave the city of Johannesburg, uh, another one of our stops that we do is the Nelson Mandela House. And uh, that's what you're looking at right now, everyone. And uh, Nelson Mandela actually lived here uh, from 1946 until 1962. Uh, the street that it's on, and forgive me if I'm uh, mispronouncing it, uh, but Vilikazi Street uh, is the only street in the world where two different Nobel uh, Prize winners actually Actually lived on the same street. Uh, not at the same time, mind you, but both Nelson Mandela and also Desmond Tutu both lived on uh, on Vilikazi Street at different times in uh, in Johannesburg. So it's kind of an, an interesting thing about it. But uh, um, lovely picture of uh, of Nelson Mandela in uh, in the center of the screen. And another uh, another quote by the great Nelson Mandela: "Do not judge me by my successes. Judge me by how many times I fell down." and got back up again so he really was an inspirational figure and uh, and he is absolutely unquestionably considered to be one of the greatest heroes of all time in South Africa thanks Cindy we're leaving this city behind now everybody and uh uh, for the bulk of the tour, we're not going to be in the big cities, although we will have a chance to uh, tour Cape Town uh, towards the end. Uh, but now we're making our way uh, into an area which is something that I know everybody uh, thinking about going to Africa uh, would very much be looking forward to. And that 
That is our first game reserve. Uh, this is Shaduli uh, game reserve uh, that you're looking at here, everybody, and uh, and Shaduli game lodge uh, specifically. Um, it's a really really beautiful place. Uh, you can see um, you know the swimming pool over on uh, on the left hand side. Uh, in the bottom of the screen, you might see the bed there with the the netting over top of it. Believe me, you'll learn very very quickly uh, when you go to Africa why you absolutely do want to pull that mesh covering down over your bed at night. Um, it looks really pretty, but it's actually really important and it will keep uh, keep the insects uh, off at night. So uh, you might think that you're not seeing any bugs, but somehow they come from somewhere. So uh, so yeah, it's really worthwhile. Um, this is just such a beautiful place. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, what that shot is basically showing you is, you know, in the late afternoon before we're heading out on a game drive or uh, perhaps uh, when we get back uh, late in the evening, table set up, just some nice refreshing drinks on just waiting for everybody so uh this is uh this is really impressive service here the staff and just the beauty of the place it's uh it's quite special it really is and uh, you know talking about safety uh earlier on in the city safety is actually very important out here as well but for a different reason uh you will be permitted to walk around inside the fenced confines of the lodge and the grounds but there's actually a relatively small area uh, where you can walk on your own. So if you're a big walker, uh, you're probably not going to get your steps in uh, while you're at the lodge because uh, it is quite a confined space uh, because now we're not worried about issues with people. We're worried about issues with animals. <laughs> so uh, so they're very, very careful, uh, even in a fenced compound, about keeping you safe uh, from wild animals. But it's such a special place. It really is. Well, our days uh, will start very early. Uh, we'll, we're at uh, the game lodges and out on game drives as well. Uh, you can see one of the uh, the trackers sitting on the front of uh, of the Land Rover there, the Range Rover. Uh, so uh, I believe there's a couple more shots of this, everybody. But what you're looking at there is your first shot of, uh, of Westworld's group last year <clears throat> sitting inside one of those uh, rovers. And uh, with a tracker on the front, so every uh, every one of those rovers is equipped with both a ranger and a tracker. And generally, the knock on your door will come between about 5 and 5.30 a.m. So um, all of the timing uh, while we're out enjoying uh, Africa's incredible wildlife is all going to be based upon uh, when the animals are out. So we do start early in the morning. So by about 5.30 at the latest, you're getting up by around 6 a.m. AM. There's going to be a light breakfast uh, all ready for us. And then by 6.30 in the morning, you're going to be leaving on your uh, on your rover uh, with your, your guide, your ranger, and your tracker. Uh, generally, these expeditions last about three hours in length. Uh, one is first thing in the morning, and another one will be mid to late afternoon. So all of our meal times, everything that we're doing is all dictated, of course, by when the animals are most active, because that's really what it's all about. Uh, if it is cool in the morning, well, that's okay. Um, there's not nice, warm, cozy blankets on the rovers. They are uncovered, of course. And uh, one thing interesting that you're going to learn very quickly on these uh, range drives is you don't ever stand up uh, in the uh, in the rovers. And the rangers and trackers will tell you that as long as we're all sitting down in the rover, uh, we're not uh, really, you know, it's not a big issue for the animals but uh, we just look like one big object. But as soon as one person stands up, well, then you can look like a target uh, to a lion or a leopard. So it's very important that everybody stays seated all the time. Uh, I remember last year on our very first game drive uh, at Shaduli. So by the way, uh, this is uh, just on the very edge of Kruger National Park, uh, where we are here in South Africa still. I remember how exciting it was to see that very first, uh, you know, sighting of white rhinos. So you're seeing some uh, some white rhinos there. Uh, but I also remember how excited we were to see our, see our very first wildlife period. And that was an impala. So that's an impala you're looking at on the top right hand uh, corner of the screen. Um, after a while, you see so many impala that you're like, oh, right, another impala. And in fact, the joke in Africa 
Africa is they call them the McDonald's of Africa because it just feels like there's one on every corner. They're everywhere. But believe me, the first Impala you see is still going to be very exciting. There is so much wildlife to see. It is absolutely mind-blowing. It really is. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Um, as I was saying, uh, meal times are always going to be uh, basically, you know, hinging around uh, when we're out uh, sightseeing uh, with the uh, the wildlife. But the ambiance is so beautiful. Um, I can't stress enough how impressive these lodges are. They're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the rooms are lovely. The grounds are incredibly lovely. The staff is so warm, so welcoming. And as I say, the ambiance is lovely. So this is uh, this is a West group uh, dining in the evening of course it's very warm and uh, just enjoying a, a beautiful candlelit dinner outside at the end of another fantastic day uh, enjoying the wildlife Um, this shot here, everybody, uh, shows you some of the wildlife uh, that uh, that we saw at uh, at Shinduli. Um, You know, people said to uh, to us last year when we were there that we were very lucky. Of course, we had nothing to compare it to. Uh, but in the first few days we were there, we saw the big five twice over. And actually, uh, one thing that I have handy tonight that I thought you might find interesting is a list of all the animals uh, that that we saw during our stay at Shinduli uh, by, um, by Kruger National Park. We saw white rhino, zebra, impala, elephant, waterbok, kudu, cheetah, giraffe, jackal, steenbok, wildebeest, leopard, cape buffalo, nolly, hippo, mongoose, squirrels, African hare, monkeys, baboons, and lions. And that's just the animals. I also have a list of the reptiles, the birds, and even some of the particularly interesting tree species as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, these are these are some of our shots. So the Cape Buffalo, uh, the wildebeest, uh, the leopard in the center of your screen, some very happy Westworld travelers uh, there in uh, the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, and an elephant in the top right-hand corner. And I have to tell you, uh, it became a bit of a joke with our group last year uh, in uh, in Africa, how many elephants we saw. And we all agreed that we probably, by the time the trip was over, we probably each had probably no less than 500 pictures just of elephants alone. So be prepared, everybody, to take lots of pictures and have lots of space on your camera, your phone, your other photo devices as well. And I'm going to make a few recommendations to you this evening of things to bring on the trip. But one I'll make right now, don't forget your binoculars. Uh, this is a trip where it's absolutely going to be worthwhile to to bring your binos on the trip. So at least one photo device, if not a couple, to be safe and uh, and definitely bring a set of binoculars as well, too. Thanks, Cindy. Um, <clears throat> another good shot of, uh, of a rover on the right hand uh, side of your screen and um, and then, uh, and then a lizard there on the uh, the lower left hand corner. Uh, most of the wildlife, uh, trees, rep, uh, birds, excuse me, birds, reptiles that uh, that we saw, our rangers and trackers were able to get every single rover to see it. They're they're so good. Uh, these guys are really incredible. Um, I know we were at some point on the trip. One rover saw a black mamba snake, which is one of the most dangerous snakes. So. Uh, but one of uh, one of the rovers saw black mamba. But for the most part, everybody saw all the same things. Uh, we did uh, see lots of warthogs as well. You can see a warthog at the bottom there. And in the top of the screen on the left hand side, everybody, I was going to mention this as well, too. Um, as I was saying earlier, these game drives that we go on generally last about three hours in length. Uh, we do have a chance to stop and get out at some point if it's a morning game drive. At some point, we'll stop and get out and they'll have muffins and coffee for us. And if it's a late afternoon game drive, we'll have a little happy hour uh, time where they will pre-order your drink. If you want to have a nice glass of wine or if you want to have a cold beer or maybe you prefer to have something non-alcoholic, they'll have all of our drinks all ready for us. And then just a, just a light snack. So maybe some dried fruit and some nuts and things like that. And we might be out there in the wilderness, but the ambiance is, uh, is still beautiful. One thing to keep in mind 
mind, there's no outhouses. There's certainly nothing like that out there. So very, very carefully, uh, you can sneak around behind a tree if you uh, if you absolutely need to. But uh, but the game drives usually last about three hours, and we'll have a lovely stop at some point on uh, on every game drive as well. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, um, at this point, uh, also, I thought uh, I should mention a little bit about uh, clothing on the tour. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I was under the impression uh, before we went to Africa is it's all about khaki colors and natural colors. Uh, I That is me in the center of the screen there wearing my, my khaki colors. I think most of us in our group last year actually bought new clothes specifically for the trip. I wouldn't say that you can't take any uh, brightly colored clothes or any black clothes along. You can wear things like that in the evening for the lodges or in the cities. There's nothing wrong with that. But while we are out on these uh, game drives, then yes, absolutely. You're not going to wear um, you know, any brightly colored clothes. You're not wearing anything orange or red or anything like that. Uh, that's when you're definitely going to wear all your khaki uh, colored clothes, tans, natural colors as well. But uh, don't feel that you can't bring at uh, things that are brightly colored or, or dressier as well. You might want those uh, in the city, uh, possibly. It's definitely advisable. I would strongly suggest uh, to bring a couple of good sweaters along those early mornings. Uh, believe me, you'll be happy that you have a couple sweaters along. And uh, of course, a good hat is uh, is paramount. Sunscreen, you'll need that as well, too. And uh, um, the shots, I'll just quickly mention uh, the shots on uh, the left and right top corners there of uh the game driver uh, game uh the drivers and uh and rangers and trackers as well um just a silly shot there in the left hand corner i think that's Polly. i'm not sure what he's doing with his butt to the camera but uh i think he was just, we we're just taking a silly shot there on our very last night and then uh in the top right hand corner uh that's all of uh our rangers and uh, and trackers and uh we just we respected those guys so much uh they are incredibly intuitive and that's so important uh they're very informative as well and they're just very very warm and very lovely people and uh, another interesting thing to note is whatever rover you are in whichever uh ranger and tracker you're with the first day you're going to stay with them every single day so you're going to get to know your ranger and tracker and they are going to know what you have seen and what you have spent the most time uh looking at uh with the animals and the commentary that they've done for you but uh, uh, but they're they're absolutely fantastic. And then uh, we got a couple of really good group photos as well. That's uh, that's a group photo uh, of our our guests last year. And then moving on, everybody, uh, we've left our first game reserve by Kruger National Park. Uh, this is on a portion of the tour now where we're actually driving. And uh, what you're looking at is a, a few of our Westworld group in front of the three rondevels. Uh, rondevel means uh, round shelter, and uh, it's an ancient geo geological wonder in uh, South Africa, located in the Blyde River Canyon. Uh, the uh, the three mountains behind the three ladies there, uh, those mountains are basically shaped like traditional uh, beehive uh, huts, which served as reminders of the uh, the native hut housing shelters called, called rondevels or round shelters. So we have some really, really beautiful sightseeing stops that day uh, en route uh, to Hazy View. And that's, that's the first of them. And uh, the second one in our next slide, this is called Bork's Luck uh, Potholes. Uh, Bork's Luck Potholes named for a man by the name of Thomas Burke, Thomas Bork, excuse me, who was a, a gold prospector and uh, discovered uh, alluvial gold back in the 1880s in this area. We actually have uh, an hour or so stop here. So you can shop and wander, go for a snack, but more importantly, you can enjoy this uh, incredible uh, geological marvel too, where the, uh, the water has carved these uh, potholes or kettles they also call them into the soft sandstone and if there's another thing I would recommend everyone that you might want to consider bringing along um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually bring a walking pole along on the tour places like this you can imagine very well why a walking pole might not be a bad idea <laughs> to have along 
good footwear, uh, good sports sandals, good running shoes. If you have hikers, things like that are uh, are definitely not a bad idea uh, to bring for footwear on this trip. Uh, this is a beautiful scenic spot. You can see that in this uh, in this shot here, and uh, it's called God's Window. So this is uh, you can see why. <laughs> this is a God's Window lookout. This is another one of our stops en route to Hazy View. Uh, one of our ladies from the 2023 group uh, waving on the left hand side of the screen standing next to Daryl, who was one of our local guides we had. And uh, again, I just I just can't say enough about how fantastic our uh, tour providers were in South Africa and all of the local guides that we had as well were all absolutely wonderful. So yeah, that's uh, Daryl Howes there in the center of the screen. Um, this is in Hazy View. This is the hotel uh, we stay at. Uh, stay at there. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, you can see all the shots that we have included for you this evening of the properties that Westworld uses. They're just they're so pretty. They really are. Um, one thing that I did learn that uh, I will definitely always now mention to our prospective guests coming on the Africa tour is another thing I would actually recommend that you bring in your luggage is a small travel size flashlight. Um, I don't think I really understood myself the idea of blackouts in uh, in Africa and how suddenly in the evening, uh, you know, there'll be generators maybe in the main building of uh, a beautiful hotel where you're staying at, but that's it. Uh, just in the in the main building, there will be generators keeping lights on. And usually the, the blackouts are quite short, but uh, sometimes they could actually last a couple hours. So, uh, so having um, a good uh, travel size flashlight and keeping that in your bag or on your person at all times is definitely another little tip I would highly recommend for you. Okay, um, and then we are flying. So uh, again, the uh, internal flights, everyone, are included as part of the trip. And uh, we will be making our way, uh, more than likely, we'll be flying back through Johannesburg. It's a hub, possibly, at least anyhow, and then making our way to Livingston. So uh, we will have, uh, have a chance to visit the countries now of uh, Zambia and then Zimbabwe as well. Great, thanks, Cindy. And we're making our way to Livingstone. So uh, so we've uh, arrived in the country of Zambia. And uh, Zambia takes its name from the Zambezi River. So this is uh, another of the four countries that we're going to visit on the tour. And of course, the Zambezi River has one very, very famous uh, natural uh, landmark, I guess you could call it, or feature, I should say, of the Zambezi River, Victoria Falls. So we're going to be talking about that soon. Uh, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. But uh, uh, Zambia, famous for having the big five, uh, most famous of, uh, of Africa's uh, wildlife. And uh, this is the city of Livingston. I have to tell you, I love the lodge that we use in Livingston. That's it in the top right-hand corner. Again, the bottom left-hand corner, you're seeing that mosquito netting. You're definitely going to want to pull that down. Uh, rooms overlooking the Zambezi River. I believe that is my shot, I think, in the lower left or lower uh, center. Um, just a sun setting over the Zambezi. And, uh, and uh, a couple of our ladies last year getting hand massages uh no charge just uh, just a little gratuity if you want to give it to the ladies in the main uh, main lobby giving hand massages uh in the afternoon that was quite lovely uh monkeys everywhere we saw lots of baboons and and monkeys and uh, you got to watch those guys you got to be pretty careful with your your french doors on your room it uh, it won't take much for them to uh, come in and help themselves to your room so you got to be pretty uh, pretty aware of uh, of keeping your doors closed and and not leaving anything on your balcony or it'll be gone pretty fast. They're, uh, they're pretty cheeky for sure. Thanks, Cindy. 
I should say too, as uh, as Cindy changes uh, the slide, I was actually thinking about this uh, during our stay in Livingston. Uh, one of the things I really, really like about Westworld's Africa itinerary is the mixture of busy time and free time. We see so much, everyone. We do so much. And yet somehow there still manages to be a very decent amount of free time. For example, talking about that beautiful lodge on the previous screen, I remember how having, you know, plenty of time in the afternoon just to, uh, to hang out in the pool and just enjoy the beautiful grounds. And it's absolutely lovely. It really is. Um, Livingston, uh, named for David uh, Livingston. And so uh, we uh, will have a chance to uh, to tour Livingston and uh, and learn a little bit more about, uh, about David Livingston. But uh, uh, he really is uh, almost like a, a mystical uh, figure in, uh, in Africa. Africa, but uh, he lived from 1813 until 1873, and uh, sadly, I uh, died in Africa uh, from malaria and, uh, and dysentery when he wasn't an old man, uh, only 60 years old. But uh, he really was one of the most popular British heroes of the 19th century. He's actually born in Scotland, but uh, as I say, he kind of took on a, a mystical status in uh, in Africa. So everyone's heard to some degree of uh, of David Livingston, but. He was famous for a few reasons. He was a Protestant missionary martyr. Uh, he had uh, the famous rags to riches story. He was a physician and an anti-slavery crusader, a scientific investigator and an explorer in Africa as well. So uh, you'll see a statue. You'll learn a little bit more about him. And we will have roughly about a one and a quarter to one and a half hour tour of uh, the city of Livingston as well before we make our way on to our next stop. So we're going to be spending time uh, not only in Zambia, we're going to be crossing the border over to uh, Zimbabwe uh, as well, too. And uh, this is another really spectacular part of the tour. And this is the Zambezi River. So this is something you can really look forward to, everyone. This is the Zambezi River Cruise. So you're going to have a chance to enjoy a beautiful sunset out in the Zambezi River. And um, again, we're going to see you know more elephants here. You're going to see lots of bird species. Uh, but I just have to tell you, uh, my experience in Kruger is that we saw so many animals there. If there was anything we were a little bit disappointed about was that we didn't really get close to hippos there. But boy, that changed later on the tour. We saw so many incredible hippo sightings um, on the Zambezi River. And then later on in the tour, we were so close to hippos uh, in Chobe National Park. You have to be really careful, though, and this is when you really, really trust uh, the guides and uh, boat drivers and rangers as well, because hippos are infamously the most dangerous animal uh, in Africa. But uh, I'm pretty sure that, slot, that slide we have in the top right-hand corner, I think I recognize that. I think that's one of mine. I, I know I got a few really good shots of uh, a hippos with their, their jaws gaping open in the river, and uh, we were not disappointed. We had fantastic hippo sightings very close, <laughs> or pretty close as close as was safe anyhow on the Zambezi River. And again, bird lovers, uh, so many different bird species uh, that you're going to see as well. So just so much. Um, I was mentioning the most famous uh, famous feature of the Zambezi River is indeed Victoria Falls. And uh, we're going to have a fantastic stay uh, in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, we're going to have uh, a, quite a bit of touring time at Victoria Falls. Again, here we've got wonderful local guides that are going to be showing us around. And uh, one thing that you should know as well, too, is that they're going to outfit us with uh, with very good heavy raincoats here. And uh, you're going to need them uh, as well, too. So, uh, yeah. Um, so this is Victoria Falls uh, that you're looking at. And uh, maybe it goes without saying, everybody, but this is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And it truly is a sight to behold. Um, it is 1.7 miles wide, and it is the largest waterfall in the world. And that is based on um, the sheet of falling water. So it is, that's why it's the largest waterfall in the world, is it's the largest sheet of falling 
falling water at 1.7 uh, miles wide. Um, just very quickly, a few interesting facts about Victoria Falls. Uh, David Livingston named it for Queen Victoria. And you can actually see the falls from two countries, both from Zambia and from Zimbabwe as well, too. 500 million liters of water cascade every minute over Victoria Falls. So uh, we do this walking tour. We stop at probably at least 10 or 11 different overlooks. So this is on foot uh, at this point that we're enjoying uh, this spectacular Victoria Falls. Thanks, Cindy. And, and after we do the tour, there's so much more to do in Victoria Falls. Uh, there's lots of shopping. There's great shopping there. Um, there's the markets. There's sightseeing. Beautiful pool, the hotel. Maybe you just want to hang out by the, uh, the swimming pool as well. Or there's other things to do as well. Uh, one of my good friends actually told me before I had gone on this trip with my Westworld group last year that you must spend the money and do the uh, helicopter ride over Victoria Falls. So um, I owed my friend Stephanie uh, a big thank you for telling me to do that because let me tell you, that was money well spent. And I would recommend it uh, if you're thinking, should I or shouldn't I spend a little bit of extra money and do the uh, the helicopter ride? The answer is yes, you should. So uh, there's Bev, one of our group members uh, last year with a big smile on her face uh, and joined the helicopter ride. But some of us did the 13 minute rides um did the 22 minute uh helicopter trip over the falls but just seeing the perspective from the air was absolutely worth the money and something that just blew my mind i actually had two passengers from our group in 2023 that opted instead of doing the helicopter ride to go bungee jumping at victoria falls i never thought i would i would see the day uh that i would have guests from one of my tours go bungee jumping on our tour but sure enough uh two of our our guests actually went bungee jumping at Victoria Falls. So maybe you'll want to try that uh, when you visit Victoria Falls. But uh, uh, it's just, it's so incredible. It really is. It's one of the seven natural wonders of the world for a reason. Terrific. Thank you. Okay. And uh, and what we're looking at here, uh, everyone, is called the uh, the BOMA uh, dinner. So this is uh, this is really fun. This is um, uh, not just a, a fun evening for us to enjoy the entertainment. I would call it a very interactive experience as well. You can see the drummers uh, there in a couple of these shots here. Uh, but the fun part is they have little mini drums um, at the tables. So it's actually an interactive show. So if you're if you're up to it, if you if you don't mind the challenge it's a lot of fun uh for the guests at the boma dinner they actually have drums for you to uh, to participate in the show um and then it's just a beautiful evening as well with uh with a really lovely meal so you can enjoy uh, uh the salads and the roasted pig and the fish uh lots of different veggies and this is going to be probably your best opportunity of the whole trip to try eating wild game so we definitely did try some wild game at the boma dinner uh uh, and Paula, the uh, the animal I was saying that we saw probably thousands of them uh, during our trip. Very, very beautiful, but very, very prolific. Uh, kudu as well, um, another of the African animals we got to uh, to taste. Uh, there was even a worm, actually. I think there were only a few of us that did that. I admit I did it. But uh, but yeah, we definitely uh, got to try a culinary experience at the Boma dinner. But uh, just a just a really fun evening before we embark on to our next adventure. Terrific. Okay, um, and now everyone, uh, we're making our way to uh, to Botswana, uh, the fourth and final of our four countries that we're going to visit um, in Africa. Uh, just a, a few interesting little fun facts for you about Botswana. Um, approximately 38% of Botswana's territory is protected as national parks, sanctuaries, reserves, and wildlife management areas as well. Um, it has the smallest border in the world, which is 
is 150 meters long between the countries of Botswana and Zambia, but it has the largest concentration of elephants of any country in the world. Uh, the shots you're seeing here, everybody, again, some uh, very happy Westworld travelers, actually lovely couple from St. Walbrook, Saskatchewan uh, in the top right hand corner uh, with a couple of lionesses uh, laying on the ground right behind them. Uh, some more of our group last year in, uh, in one of the rovers. So that's, again, very, very typical of, uh, of what you're going to be in if you join us uh, on the Africa tour in 2025. Uh, zebra, of course, and uh, a beautiful male lion there in, uh, in the center of the screen. It's it's pretty mind blowing the first time you get close uh, to one of these big lions, and we absolutely had opportunities uh, to be close uh, to the male lions. Um, I have a few different experiences, well, several really, uh, that just are really just uh, engraved in my mind of things that we saw and experiences we had. But a couple of my favorite lion experiences: uh, one day, all the rovers were lined up, our rovers, and then some other folks as well too, and a prize of lions walked right past us and of course they want everyone to be very very quiet and you're just you can't help it you're just speechless and the hair is standing up in your arms I think they said there was around I believe it was 11 or 13 lions in the pride and I think it was eight of them walked right past us and one after another they just kept coming out of the brush and it was just amazing to see all of these lions totally natural, totally in the wild, walking uh, right past our rover. Uh, another one of the experiences that stuck with me so profoundly, maybe because I'm a cat lover, uh, was watching a lioness getting ready to make a kill. Uh, now, I have to tell you, we never actually witnessed a, a kill happening uh, during our trip. We saw the aftermath of kills and quite recent a few times. We never actually literally watched a kill happen. Uh, but we watched a lioness preparing for a kill. And just like your house cat, any of you are listening tonight who have a house cat, you know, just that position, just that crouching and the butt kind of swaying back and forth as she was waiting to take off. And then just like a shot, she took after that Impala. And it was just such an incredible experience. Uh, when I say it's the sensory experience of Africa, it really was the moments like that that I found just profound. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. So uh, again, this is uh, Toby National Park uh, that we're in. Um, I know I've said it already, but I can't help but say it again. Uh, these rangers and trackers, the local guides that we have, uh, they are fantastic. They're so informative. They're also very tenacious as well, too. That's one of our guides uh, in the bottom right-hand corner holding a big piece of elephant dung and uh, giving us an explanation on elephant dung and all the benefits <laughs> of it as well. So that's what's happening uh, there. Uh, there's a termite mound. Uh, they're pretty impressive unto themselves in the top right hand corner, in the top left hand corner, the beautiful, incredible night sky, um, the path uh, of a snake on the lower left hand corner and uh, a little baby elephant uh, in the center of, uh, of the screen. So Botswana is famous for having the most elephants in the world and for being such an enormous animal. It's really incredible how quiet they are, how you don't even see the elephant until you know the trackers point it out and it's just maybe 20 or 30 feet away from you and you didn't even notice it. We get so close to elephants. I also think I had no understanding how close we were going to get where we're literally sitting there in the rovers looking up at the elephants, discussing how long their eyelashes were. So just uh, just absolutely incredible. And uh, so many animals. Again, we saw um, anyone listening tonight who likes birds. Some of the birds we saw uh, crowned lapwings, uh, kingfisher, lilac breasted ruler. They're very beautiful. Spur fall, sacred ibis, um, African darters, guinea fall, Egyptian goose, uh, fish eagle, and reed cormorant, just to name a few. So that's just uh, a little bit I wanted to tell you about uh, various animals and, and various birds. And I could go on, but for the sake of time, I, I won't, <laughs> as far as all the things that, uh, that you'll likely see. So.
Yeah. So again, this is our stay in Chobe National Park, uh, but there are over 500 species of birds alone in uh, in Chobe uh, National Park. And that is, I'm pretty sure I'm correct here, that is a kudu uh, on the left-hand side of the screen with the interesting facial mark markings and those uh, beautiful um, spiral horns as well too. Uh, another hippo uh, in the lower part of the screen. We saw a lot of hippos in, uh, in Chobe. Be. And uh, and again, um, the top uh, right hand corner, I like that slide because it uh, shows you a couple of our guests last year taking pictures on their cell phones of an elephant so close to us. Uh, we would have game drives in Chobe, but then we would also have um, uh, boat cruises in Chobe. And those were some of our best sightings, of course, of hippos, but of elephants too. Another memorable experience I recall was watching a family of elephants one after another just like a parade all coming out of the river all heading up on shore with the babies in between them and just incredible and even the experience of watching a giraffe drink from the river and thinking oh that's how giraffes drink uh standing basically looking like a tripod uh on the uh, on the edge of the river so uh, pretty fascinating and uh, and again um just a lot of sensory experiences very much so well, we're getting towards the end here, everybody. So I'll try and pick up the pace a little bit, but we're back in the city now. And uh, now we're back in South Africa again. So we've had a chance to visit Zambia, Zimbabwe, and uh, Botswana. And now we've actually flown back to the big city. So uh, this is uh, this is uh, is interesting. You're looking at the Bokop uh, neighborhood with all those brightly colored buildings and famous Table Mountain, the, uh, the flat top mountain, which uh, really serves as uh, not just a back, backdrop for Cape Town, but an incredibly uh, famous feature and icon uh, as well, too, uh, which we do have a chance to uh, to visit during our stay. We take the gondola, but a six or seven minute ride up to the top of uh, Table Mountain for just fantastic views up there. Well, we did have uh, some rainy weather during our stay in Cape Town, and uh, so we, uh, we managed to get up there on the day when we had the best weather, uh, but when the views are obscured from Table Mountain, they say that Table Mountain is wearing its tablecloth. Uh, and uh, there's other uh, other mountain peaks like Lion's Head that you can see uh, from the uh, from the top. So, yeah, looking at uh, Victoria Market and uh, the waterfront in uh, in Cape Town as well. But uh, it is a beautiful city, 4.9 million people, the second largest city by population in South Africa after Johannesburg. Thanks, Cindy. And getting towards the end, everybody, um, what would a trip to South Africa be without a chance to tour the wine lands? Uh, this is certainly something that South Africa is very famous uh, for the wines that they produce. So any of you joining us that uh, happen to be wine lovers, again, uh, you won't be disappointed. Um, I am a wine lover and uh, I certainly wasn't disappointed. Uh, if you're not a wine drinker, it's still absolutely gorgeous. It really is. Uh, the dry uh, out into the wine lands is really, really beautiful. We actually stop at three different wineries. So you're getting uh, a lot of opportunities just to taste and pairings as well. One of the wineries that we visited that specialized in pairings with cheese and wines, another that specialized in chocolate and wine pairings. Uh, really, really lovely. So uh, this is going to be one of our day trips uh, from our, our stay in Cape Town. And uh, this is going to be another um, of our day trips from Cape Town, um, the, uh, the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, you're seeing in the top right hand corner uh, some of uh, the wildlife and of course the boulders beach uh, penguins it's pretty interesting to consider all the countries in the world where penguins live in the wild they're not just in Antarctica uh, penguins in the Galapagos Islands uh, penguins in New Zealand uh, of course penguins in South Africa as well and uh, these are the boulder beach uh, penguins uh, their numbers were very very threatened and uh, Badly decreased at one time, but uh, the penguins have uh, have made a resurgence uh, thanks to conservation efforts, and uh, and they're pretty special. They're they're a lot of fun. So we have a chance to uh, to see the Boulder Beach penguins uh, as well. Actually, it's a funny thing about the the penguins of South Africa. They had another name at one time, which is uh, perhaps not considered 
proper anymore, but they were called jackass penguins. And they were called that because of the bringing noise that they would make. So, so they were called that at one time, but they are the, uh, the Boulder Beach penguins of, uh, of South Africa. Okay, and uh, we're nearing the end now. Uh, but uh, we, we certainly should mention before we get to, to the end of the presentation, everyone, Robin Island. And uh, we will have a chance to take the ferry over to Robin Island uh, for a tour of this, uh, this the prison, uh, which was actually de declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, that happened back in 1999, but it was used as a prison and, uh, and a place of, uh, of exile as well, where people were, were banished and exiled for more than 400 years years uh, it was used. Uh, now, the really incredible thing is the local guides at Robben Island are formal political prisoners. And that was very, very interesting to have a formal political prisoner uh, share his personal stories about being on Robben Island. It was not um, not a nice place to be <laughs> really it was uh it was it was harsh it was and this is of course where nelson mandela was also incarcerated uh 27 years uh, he was there beginning in 1964 uh for plotting to overthrow south africa's uh racist apartheid uh, system he was there until 1982 so um uh so we'll have a chance to uh, <clears throat> to visit uh, Robben Island. And uh, I know I've shared a couple of Nelson Mandela quotes already this evening, but uh, we're nearing the end of our presentation. And he um, he really is very much considered to be a hero of South Africa. And so um, and an, a very inspirational person as well. So I think it's uh, appropriate to include uh, one final quote uh, by Nelson Mandela. And that is, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Thanks, Cindy. And then uh, as we near the end of our epic uh, adventure in uh, in Africa, we have uh, a lovely farewell dinner. And uh, this is really another interactive evening. In fact, even at this show, uh, they had drums that uh, guests could pick up at the tables and, uh, you know, and just uh, tap along to uh, to the beat with the, um, the entertainers up on stage. And this is actually another night uh, when uh, you'll have the opportunity to taste some local uh, South African cuisine and I know it's one of the things I love about traveling is experiencing cultures and experiencing places uh, through their uh, through their food and and drink and those kinds of things as well so so really lovely um, talking about fantastic guides uh, one of our local guides actually very kindly even made a list that he gave to all of our Westworld guests of suggested reading different books different movies different documentaries we could watch uh, to learn more about uh, South Africa and uh, you know in its history and and so on so very very interesting um, important part of our tours everyone before we conclude uh, many of you listening tonight have traveled with us before you you know this but uh, um, as local, uh, excuse me, as a uh, West Rural guides, uh, we'll reach out to you and touch base before the tour and uh, and give you a call. Particularly on a big tour like Africa, you may have lots of questions for us. Uh, you know, talking about things to bring. I mentioned uh, uh, a walking pole. I mentioned binoculars. I mentioned a small travel flashlight. You might be thinking about what kind of clothes and if I should bring dress clothes and what kind of shoes and do I need to have mosquitoes mosquito repellent and what kind of currency should I be taking along so especially on a big trip like this uh what kind of um you know device do I need for charging my my cell phone uh, you know what what voltage uh, is it there's so many things and uh, we like to be there for you uh in in those respects as well to uh, at Westworld just to reach out and answer all those questions to you so everyone uh it is my genuine pleasure to uh to be lucky enough to share with you a bit about Westworld uh, Africa tour and uh, again there's just not enough words to tell you what a special tour this is except to say it really truly is an epic adventure and uh, that's not an exaggeration at all so uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight and on that note I'll turn things back over to Cindy. Well, thank you, Carl. That was wonderful. I mean, I could have just listened to you. I could feel the experience you encountered while you were in Africa. And uh, 
definitely on my bucket list um, to do an African safari is has been on my list for a while. I'm hoping I will be able to get there one day. Uh, but we definitely could feel your experience and how um, enlightening it was for you in cases as well as how um, impactful it was. And like you said, that's how a giraffe drinks out of the river. Uh, you know, looking up at the eyelashes of an elephant, like, you know, I, I, I can't, it, it gives me shivers thinking about the experience that you, you were able and our guests were able to encounter um, on our Africa tour last year. So I'm sure that they will experience those and others uh, coming forward in 2025. But as, as this slide really says, Africa, an experience that will stay with you for a lifetime. And I think you you very much portrayed that um, in your presentation this evening, Coral. It was wonderful. Thank you. Um, just to recap, we are going in May of 2025, um, leaving May 7th, returning on the 23rd. Included in our tour is all the entrance fees, activities and attractions, many meals, um, your international internal flights within Africa itself. It will be a smaller group. Um, so you're not looking at a large group. It will be a smaller, more intimate group. It's a deposit of $700 per person um, to save your spot. I know we have a lot of people booked already and uh, we don't want you to be disappointed if you wait too long. So we really would encourage you to put your deposit down if you're thinking about this. Um, that deposit is fully refundable up to the beginning of January of 2025. And um, for a limited time right now, we do have an early booking bonus, which uh, you can take advantage of, where we, you will save $150 per person. And um, so, you know, there's no reason not to, uh, to join us on this African adventure, and we hope that you will be able to join us. And for that, now we can and would love to get um, to your questions. So let's see what we have for questions. At this point, Coral, you must have done a fabulous job answering everybody's questions because we don't have any questions at this point. Um, I do have, you know, one question that we do get asked a lot about Coral and, and I'm going to present it to you is, is currency. Um, you know, what, what is the best currency to travel with um, on a tour like this? Actually, we used a lot of American uh, currency uh, on, uh, mm -hmm. on the trip. So yeah, yeah, uh, American currency actually worked quite well in uh, in most places we were, and uh, and credit cards were definitely readily accepted everywhere we went as well. Good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. Another so another question. So go ahead. I was just going to say, you don't need to worry so much about having different currency for every country uh, that we're going to. Uh, American is actually pretty universal there. Good, good, and mm -hmm. it was easy to change into local currency. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we never really had any issues uh, with that. I don't think we had any, um, any, any real problems with that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And whether at that time of year, Coral, I think you covered that pretty much, you know, something like your mornings when you're on safari are going to be a little bit cooler and the mm. evenings, of course, could be a little bit cooler. Um, but I'm thinking during that time frame, the temperatures are pretty comfortable throughout. They are. Yeah. Uh, wh what I learned is that this was a tour where going forward, I, I learned there were a lot of very specific things to tell people, like the flashlight, for example, is really a classic example of that. And also another thing I learned is that, yes, you should bring your natural colored, you know, khaki colored clothes, but you can still bring, you know, other things for the city. And that's OK, too. You know, most of us didn't do that. But, uh, um, you know, some layering uh, for sure. Uh, gloves, I would say no, but uh, but a hat, definitely yes. And as I was saying, a couple of sweaters, but definitely some shorts, definitely some tank tops as well. And uh, you really won't need any dressy shoes <laughs> anywhere. Uh, you know, pretty pretty comfy footwear is is going to be key everywhere you go. We do have we do have one question that has come through here, um, asking. This is a great question: Are there laundry facilities along the way? 
Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember now uh, how many of the hotel properties have laundry. I think we did somewhere. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that every place did. I don't remember the game lodges having them. The cities may have. I honestly mm -hmm. remember doing a little bit of laundry in the sink. Uh, so, you know, the little packets you can buy, uh, you know, at CAA or any, you know, travel agency or anywhere you can, um, you can buy the little, um, the sink packets. If they don't take up much room or much weight, I would bring a couple of those along as well, because I know I did some laundry in, in sinks <laughs> as well, too. Yeah, that is a great question. And and I know myself, too. I'm always traveling with some little packets for to do sink washing in my room and hang to dry overnight. So Exactly. Yeah. Always best to be prepared. But, yeah, you'll so, probably yeah. use them on this trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that was a great question. And, and thank you, Carl, for... For answering that. So let's see if we have something else here. Huh. Uh, we have we have a good question here uh, asking if we do get a lot of single travelers and are these are there specific vaccines that you need to get beforehand? Um, and is a Canadian passport sufficient? And uh, lots of great questions there, Karen. Um, as far as do we get a lot of single travelers? Single travelers, yes, we do. We do get a lot of single travelers. And I believe in our Africa tour, we had a number of um, single travelers um, on, on our tour. And as far as specific vaccines, Coral, maybe you can speak to that. Um, I tried to remember, Cindy, I know there were some shots that I actually either got or had updated uh, as a precaution. Uh, you may remember as well, I don't recall that there was much that we had to have, but definitely some things that were suggested or recommended. I believe I got my malaria shot, my yellow fever uh, shot as well uh, mm -hmm. that I had beforehand, but really more of a precaution than than anything. Right. So it doesn't hurt to get them if you're, you know, if you're comfortable doing that. And I just thought it might be wise. And I believe uh, some did, uh, some some didn't uh, in uh, in the group. But uh, always, and always recommend that they go travel talk to the travel health clinic and uh, the travel health clinic can advise you on what shots are required as well as recommended so um, mm -hmm. that is something that we would always tell you to do on a trip like this is to check with the travel health clinic and your doctor um, they can advise you as well and is a Canadian passport um, sufficient now, I do believe that there were some visas that maybe were required, but they were at the border, I believe. That's me right. If wrong on that. Yeah, I believe, uh, if memory serves me, I believe it was crossing into Botswana uh, that we uh -huh. had to had to get the visa. But yes, um, as I recall, we all had to be sure that we had $50 American cash <laughs> at the border uh, for, I think it was called the Uni, Uni visa or Uni, Uni visa uh, we had to get. And I that was, so. yeah. was crossing into, uh, into Botswana. But that was something that we, that you're right, that we did, uh, did at the border. So, yeah. So Coral, that is correct. Sorry, I was just jumping in here. Um, Leanne here. Uh, it was uh, the Zam uh, Zimbabwe and the Zambia where you needed the Univisa for fifty dollars. Yeah. Um, Leanne, anything that you would add further about currency or any of those other uh, questions as well? No, the currency, uh, like you said, U.S. dollars is is more than efficient um, for getting around there. I will add um, some comments from Facebook. Um, so Kevin, yes. who traveled with you in uh, May of last year, has a few uh, comments to add um, in addition to what you were saying. Um, so he kind of just was following along here. Uh, he says, West World Tours did a fantastic job helping with those questions and will guide you appropriately. Um, and he said, you must talk about the food that we had from start to finish of the trip. You will not go hungry, and it was extraordinarily tasty. Just realized I the camera on. Excellent. Um, and he said, the hunt from the lioness was so awesome. Our hearts were pounding when it was happening. Uh, 
he said there was two or three places that had laundry facilities. Okay. So okay. Um, you will be able to do that. And uh, he just says, hi, Coral. We were on the tour with you. Well worth going to South Africa. Winelands were awesome. And the food pairing was incredible. And uh, just a, a fun tip from him. If you have a CPAP machine and you're traveling on this trip, taking an extension cord um, is is helpful as the plugins were a little bit limited in the room. So that's a uh, great tip for that. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's awesome. Awesome. That's great feedback. And thank, thanks, Kevin, very much for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We do have another question here from Barbara. And she's asking how much long distance walking is involved. Um, yeah, that's a good question. It's a, it's a very common question, of course, uh, on tours as well. Um, I was thinking about that earlier today because I was thinking probably somebody would ask that tonight. Um, this is a tour where um, maybe in the cities uh, there was a little bit more distance walking because we are we were on foot at times. Uh, you know, as we are, you know, just visiting different places, uh, visiting Table Mountain or, um, you know, Soweto, wherever it happened to be. Um, but not a lot of distance. I would say probably less so uh, on the Africa tour than there is in most tours in Europe. I find probably the tours in Europe are traditionally uh, the West World tours that would have the most walking. Um, as I was saying, though, it's definitely a tour where you'll want good footwear in the game lodges uh, on the safari drives. You're doing very little walking. There's just in fact, there's no opportunities uh, to walk for the most part, uh, even when you, you wish you could. <laughs> so a bit more in the cities, but less Less, definitely less than some tours, less than less than European tours, I I would say for sure. I'm not sure, uh, Leanne, if you want to add to that as well, too, but that that's definitely my opinion. What about the, the Victoria Falls walk? Yeah, you know what? That's a great point, Cindy. Um, that's easy walking, though. It's all on the level. Uh, but yeah, and it's, and it's a slow walk too. There's nothing fast about that because we're basically walking from photo overlook to photo overlook. Uh, okay. so it's flat, it's level. Um, it's not a fast walk at all, but, um, as I recall, I had, uh, one lady in the group last year that had, I think it was, um, uh, a previous ankle injury or something of that nature. And we actually, for a very good price, managed to hire her, not to just a, a wheelchair, but a, a very nice young gentleman who also accompanied her and pushed her in the wheelchair oh, uh, during our stay at Victoria Falls. Uh, and as I say, for quite a reasonable price, I thought I thought it was quite a bargain. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. she'd had an injury, I believe it was from a couple of years previous, and uh, the the ankle or the leg, whatever it was, was bothering her by that point in the tour. And uh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's great. I was I was curious about that Victoria Falls walk myself as far as, yeah. you know, um, what that would be like. So it's mm -hmm. good to know it's nice and flat and level, mm -hmm. um, easy walk, nice. And I'm, and I'm assuming it would be a very slow, leisurely walk because you're, right. you're viewing all the way along too. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you're hearing about the different vegetation and, and all of that good stuff. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, like right. I said, maybe a few stretches in the cities where we had to walk a ways to get somewhere, but uh, but uh, quite quite infrequent, I would say, and really only in the cities. That would be about it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Leanne, did we have any any further comments or questions on Facebook? No, nothing else. Uh, one one comment that I did miss um, from Kevin was that he did find it helpful to take some of the South African rand. Um, so you can order that through your bank ahead of time or exchange it when you get there. Uh, but he did find it helpful. But uh, like Coral said, US is um, is great and so are credit cards. So um, it's just up to your preference whether you like to carry cash on you for the little you know, exchanges of water or things like that. Right, excellent, excellent. Well, that's great. And if we've left you with any questions that are that are unanswered, um, please send us an email to inquiries at westworldtours.com and we will be happy to answer them for you. And if you have more um, questions about any of our tours, you can uh, check us out online at westworldtours.com. 
and uh, contact your local travel agent. They'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. And of course, we're always ready to answer any questions you might have as well. So anybody who registered for tonight's presentation will receive an email from us that will have a link to all of the information. And uh, yeah, you can find out more that way as well. And uh, we look forward to providing our future presentations and hopefully you'll be able to join us then. And Coral, wonderful. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And Leanne, thank you for jumping in there and monitoring Facebook for us. That's great. And everybody enjoy the rest of your evening and um, we'll see you soon. And before we end, sorry, Cindy um, and Coral, I just wanted to um, let everyone know that um, on April 10th, Coral will be celebrating 10 or 10 years, 23 years with Westworld Tours, um, as Cindy said at the beginning of the presentation. Um, so just on behalf of Westworld Tours and all of our staff and tour directors, we are just really so thankful and happy to have you as part of our team and uh, appreciate all you do. And um, just just throwing that out there before you head off on your on your next uh, personal adventure. Um, vacation so uh, we won't see you around for a while until we're back at it in May so we look forward to uh, seeing everyone then and again a big congratulations to Coral um, and thank you for all you do for us oh yeah thanks Leanne. I really appreciate your kind words <laughs> thank you so much that means a lot to me and uh, all of you who are with us tonight um, it's really so nice to have you here with us and uh, um, yeah Africa is an epic adventure it really is and I hope maybe some of you who joined us this evening will join us on the tour going forwards and I certainly hope to meet you there so thank you it's a pleasure to be here this evening enjoy the rest of your evening everybody and again thank you for joining us Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.